students welcome to the dr bhatia medical coaching institute and eholkit i am dr ramneshri your opgain guru so in this video i'm going to discuss quickly in 10 minutes five mcqs right so it's a high yielding mcqs and you know a quick five points you can learn in 10 minutes five mcqs in 10 minutes that's the main theme of this video so mid aged woman came to the 28 38 weeks pregnancy came to opd with 38 weeks pregnancy she already has three first trimester abortions she has a 6 year old female child who is born at the end of 7th month what is her accurate representation so if you observe here it is not gtpal it is g it is not gpal it is gtpal so we have two methods of interpretation the obstetrics code gpal and gtpal so gpal may g stands for gravida so gravida means total number of pregnancies irrespective of the outcome of them so gravida is total number of pregnancies irrespective of the outcome and it also includes the current pregnancy right para means number of births that have crossed the period of viability that is after 24 weeks and it does not include the current pregnancy so gpal may we have gravida para abortion living abortion all those pregnancies which ended before 24 weeks living how many alive kids you have gt pal may instead of para you write it either term or preterm so those pregnancies which have which have crossed 37 to 40 weeks will come under term those pregnancies which have delivered between 24 to 36 will come in preterm any pregnancies which ended before 24 weeks will come under abortion l is living children so instead of para you are going to replace the para in para you are going to express for the term par preterm and abortion and living so if you go back totally how many times she got pregnant she is now pregnant she had previously three abortions she has one live child so on the whole she is gravida 5 right only one pregnancy crossed the period of viability but that two in seven months so para 1 was it a term or preterm so that delivery which has happened was at the end of 7th month so it is not term it's a preterm so for preterm i'm going to write one how many abortions she had so p palme p will stand for p palme p will stand for term p stands for preterm so in the para you have to express further whether it is a term pregnancy or preterm pregnancy next if she had any abortions yes she had three abortions plus one living child so this will be the interpretation for gt bar so that will come for g5 p1 0 plus 1 plus 3 plus 1 okay next a prosthetic heart valve patient switch to heparin at which time of pregnancy very important and many times asked previously so from 1 to 13 weeks from 1 to 13 weeks patient has to use low molecular weight heparin and avoid warfarin from 1 to 13 weeks patient has to use low molecular weight heparin and avoid warfarin because warfarin causes warfarin embryopathy 13 to 36 weeks patient can use warfarin so warfarin embryopathy can all, is also called as contradi syndrome beyond 36 weeks again you have to shift back to low molecular weight heparin because warfarin has high long half life and warfarin uh, can go into the fetal skull fetal blood also and it can cause anticoagulation effect in the fetus and during lactation again you are going to use warfarin so when should she shift at 36 weeks she has to shift back to normal clavitapar progesterone is secreted by so it is a luteinized granulosa cell progesterone is secreted by so progesterone is secreted by luteinized granulosa cell so normally we have pica cell and granulosa cell we have pica cell and granulosa cell so when lh will come and act on pica cell it will produce androgen this androgen will go into the granulosa cell so when fsh will come and act on the granulosa cell it will lead to androgen converts into estradiol but same fsh only will come and sorry but if same lh only will come and act on the granulosa cell then androgen will get converted into progesterone 
okay so uh, progesterone is released from luteinized granulosa cell after a normal delivery in a 27 year old female placenta is still attached with the uterus most common complication which can occur due to forceful traction of the cord is so normally we have to separate the placenta after the placenta is separated so we usually do this method by this what is this brands andrew method or control cord traction where you put one hand on the abdomen with another hand you hold the cord and then you do two and four motion to remove the placenta right so if you don't put this hand and then you are just pulling the placenta it can lead to along with placenta uterus also coming out so most common complication which can occur due to forceful traction is it can lead to uterine inversion okay sometimes even placenta cord can break cord breaks off you have to do manual removal of placenta permicidal cream which is used in contraceptive so it is nanoxinol 9 nanoxinol 9 is usually used in the sponge so where sperms are absorbed into the sponge and then it releases nanoxinol 9 to kill the sperms so what are the uh, how does this spermicide act so spermicide mainly acts by dissolution of the cell membrane of the sperm so spermicide mainly acts by dissolution of the cell membrane of the sperm okay the other spermicides what we have are octoxinol benzalkonium and menfigol and menfigol right so next let us see one more mcq anesthesia of choice for pulmonary hypertension parents patients during delivery so pulmonary hypertension ideally comes under who category 4 so they should not continue the pregnancy they should you should offer termination for them so ideally the method of termination for them will be suction and evacuation but if they continue the delivery continue the delivery and they are undergoing cesarean section then the anesthesia of choice will be general anesthesia general anesthesia so usually there are only three conditions where we use general anesthesia in cardiac disease patients that is intra cardiac shunts ev malformations and basically whenever there is shunting and pulmonary hypertension and apart from that nowadays the anesthesia of choice anesthesia of choice for pre eclampsia so anesthesia of choice for pre eclampsia is spinal guys it's not epidural it is spinal we are mainly using the epidural for analgesia so anesthesia of choice for severe pre eclampsia and lscs will be spinal whereas anesthesia of choice for eclampsia will be general anesthesia anesthesia of choice for lscs when patient is in shock when patient is in shock so if patient is in shock then anesthesia of choice for lscs will be again general anesthesia right so normally nowadays for lscs we are routinely using spinal anesthesia itself but if you have uh, anything which will already there is low hypertension uh, already hypotension then better go for general anesthesia and in general anesthesia also to increase the blood pressure like when patient is in shock you have to use general anesthesia with ketamine general anesthesia with ketamine okay so for intra cardiac shunt for av malformation for pulmonary hypertension it is mainly general anesthesia what we use so anesthesia of choice for pre eclampsia for eclampsia is general anesthesia so anesthesia of choice for lscs and patient in shock also general anesthesia okay now these were the five important questions which we discussed now so always remember guys this gpal is very important so gravida means total number of pregnancies which are included including the current pregnancy and when you have twins 
twins will be one gravida or one para with outcome of two living issues twins will be one gravida or one para with outcome of two living issues okay right so here the same question i think we can also discuss what is the gpal for this right so gpal will be instead of writing plus plus it will be like single so gravida will be 5 para will be 1 abortion will be 3 living will be 1 so this will be the gpal expression so the same thing when you are expressing the gtpal so the term and preterm will dividing and you are writing it as plus plus right so i hope uh, you understood the mcqs so we discussed uh, some important five mcqs here i think six mcqs so that's all for this video a short video of mcqs we'll keep posting more videos like this before your exam of ini cet so all the best guys keep studying keep preparing any doubt always feel free to message guys thank you so much thank you so much